my name is uh, Sam Fuller Jr. My, uh, my art identity is the old black man, uh, old black man art. And uh, how that came about was, you know, I'm old, I'm black, I'm a man, and I'm an artist. So it was like the ideal, you know, I was trying to come up with a, uh, an email address. That's how that started. And so, you know, I could always, do you want me to like look in the camera? Well, Not necessarily, not yeah, okay. Yeah, um, I could always draw. When I say always, as far back as I can remember, I could always draw because uh, my dad could draw. And he had all these drawings around the house, you know, and so I was the firstborn, I was, you know, the male. So I was always trying to impress my dad, you know, regardless of what it is. And one of the areas was, uh, you know, my art. And I was fascinated by his, by his ability because it was real good, you know. He was very good with, uh, with women in particular, you know. It was, everything was pretty, uh, pretty clean, you know. I can remember a couple of nudes, you know, but it was pretty clean, you know. Provocative, I would say, stuff was provocative. And so as a child, as far back as, you know, I'm going back to like three and four years old, I was just always sketching, you know, trying to impress my dad. And then my dad died, you know, uh, when I was young. I was only 10 when my dad passed. And I actually lost all uh, interest in art because I only did it because of him. And so once he, once he passed, I actually didn't pick up a pencil to do anything artistically until I was literally a grown man. And I remember I was, you know, like 21. And I used to live, it was like me and two other guys. And I was living in Michigan, was working for General Motors. And at this point, the only people who know I had any art ability at all was just my immediate family. Mother, my brother, my sister, my brother was real little. And I was, uh, I was working second shift at, at Buick, and um, the other two guys, they worked first shift, so they're already at work. I'm at home waiting to go to work, and for some reason, I decided to sketch something that day. I mean, to this day, I don't know what made me sketch, because I hadn't sketched anything, and I couldn't, you know, it had been years. So I did something, went to work. So my, one, of my, one of the guys, when he came, he saw it, he was an artist. He was into like landscapes, seascapes, that kind of thing. So when I saw him again, I remember him saying, oh wow, man, I didn't know you could draw, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he encouraged me as an adult to just keep it up. You know, not like to live a life as an artist, but just like keep it up. So from that point on, sporadically, I would do certain things. Generally, I was just from my own personal, you know. And, uh, being in the military, now I'm ex-military, you know, we have the, the GI Bill available to us, which the government pays for you to go to college. So I decided to use, uh, you know, I had already gone to school and, and they got a, uh, an associate's degree, a two-year degree in dental technology uh, as a dental technician. And then uh, I ended up going back to the, I ended up going to the University of Pittsburgh because I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I, you know, I just went to school. I, I had already completed my dental te technology aspect as far as college. So I had to say, well, what am I going to major? So I, I became an art major just because that was the only skill that I felt like I had at that time. And that's how it started in terms of other people becoming aware of me being an artist. I have an artistic ability, but even then, I'm not, trying to be an artist per se. I'm not living a life as an artist. I'm still doing whatever. And I'm all over the map because life to me was like a, uh, an all you can eat buffet, like a golden corral. And I'm trying to see and do as much as I can. So I'm all over the place, you know. And it was just, uh, it was just a series of circumstances that brought me here to say Southside on Lamar you know, where by the time I reached here, like I've been here like going on six years, it'll be six years next month, which is the longest I've ever lived anywhere. And since I've been here, like people who know me, 
they just they know me as as an artist you know someone said what do you do well I'm an artist you know and I lived a life as an artist and I, I I take the good with the bad so I mean I was fully grown you know I had already become an old man by the time I really started trying to you know it's, you know, when I started living this life as an artist. And it, it's been very rewarding. Uh, not so much individual sales, you know, that's always nice. But the, the main thing that art has done for me is, first of all, it's given me a, a purpose in life. In other words, when I wake up every morning, you know, through the grace of God, then I know that, you know, I can come out here to my studio and, and, and create and do something, you know, this is like every day, you know. And that gives me a lot of pleasure because it kind of validates my existence to say, well, I'm here and when I'm dead and gone, like I was here because I got stuff. I can honestly say I literally have uh, artwork all, all, over the, all over the world and that's because people from all over the world have purchased my art, I mean, all over Europe, people who I never thought would even uh, have any interest in, in what I do at all. You know, these are like non-black Europeans from places like Greece and Spain, and Czechoslovakia, Ireland, Spain, France, you know, the list just goes on and on. And I would meet these people. Uh, I've met some here in Dallas, uh, mostly when I was in, I was living in DC. This is like in 2005, 2007. And it was really mind blowing that these people were buying my stuff because my art is very, uh, it's funky. That's the word I use, it's funky. It's just what comes out of me. So everything I do, there's some relationship to what I do and what I've done. For example, this picture right here, I'm, I'm pretty much finished with this here, just to finish the touch. It's just a simple picture of a, you know, of a guy making a, a, a catch, you know, in the outfield. And as a kid, I played a lot of football, I mean, ba uh, baseball. In fact, that was my first love as far as sports. I was into baseball more so than, say, let's say basketball or football. I played Little League, Pony League, and uh, the one and only letter that I got in high school for playing sports, it was for playing softball. So this is just an example of me just doing something that's a reflection of something I did personally. And everything I do, there's some relationship between the art, the artwork and, you know, my life. So that, 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 that you know, that sports, religion, uh, women, dancing, singing, even though I can't sing, but I love singing. I love people who, who do sing, you know. And then just urban scenes, you know. Uh, most of the stuff that I do doesn't have uh, a story behind it, meaning that, you know, like if your woman leaves you, so you all depressed, so you do a picture about your woman. Nah, I don't really do it like that. I'll, uh, I'll, I get, really, I get ideas, I get thoughts. And the hardest, probably the hardest thing for me is when I start something new because I have all these ideas, so I have to narrow everything down to just one, you know, one idea, you know, because I generally only work on one picture at a time, you know. And let's say I finally decide on doing something musical, so that's what it's going to be. It's going to be musical, so now I have to decide, well, you know, it's, am I going to have one instrument, two instruments, three instruments, you know. But all of that just comes as I'm working on the picture. So I'm just starting out with the idea, like this guy, for example. I just started out with a guy, you know, making a catch, you know. Then everything else, and so far as me putting this, this, this brick wall and, you know, the grass and the sun and, and this shadow, all of that came, that just evolved during the course of the picture. So once the picture is finished, I never see that. I didn't see that. All I saw was, all right, I'm gonna have a guy playing baseball. What am I having him doing? Hitting the ball? catching the ball, what, in the infield, outfield. And I played the outfield. I, I could play all positions. I, I didn't pitch. But uh, so, you know, that's, so that's how it is. So just about anything I do, I'm starting out with an idea. But I never know where I'm going. So it's kind of like the term that kids use in terms of rapping. It's like freestyle. And I like that. 
You know, that's, that's like the fun part because I'm constantly in an exploration sort of frame of mind, which is typical of my personality. I mean, my whole adult life has been like, you think Columbus was an explorer. You know, me, I've been everywhere, all over the place. Because a lot of times I would just do stuff just to say, yeah, I wonder what that'd be like. Let me check that out. And, that, and so that's the way my art is, you know, like uh, the only thing that's kind of specific now is that I work primarily in just pencil now. Pencil, a little marker, a little acrylic, but everything you see is it's, it's just all pencil and, and pen, you know. Uh, been so far as, you know, how I'm going to put it down, you know, how, you know, this and that. I, I don't see any of that, you know. Uh, and again, that's, that's the fun part. And I was talking about the rewards of being an artist. What it has done for me, you know, like at my age, usually, you know, because technically I am retired, you know. The average person my age, you know, they're retired and they don't have nothing to do. They're just sitting around like a couch potato, just kind of waiting on the Grim Reaper, you know. Whereas me, I, I mean, I, you know, what, the one good thing about art, age is not a factor. I mean, there's many things you can do in life that uh, you reach a certain age, you can't do it no more. Like Michael Jordan, as good as he was at what he did as a basketball player, those days are gone. You know, if Michael suit up now, talking about coming back again, you know, he'll get dogged out. You know, he, he won't last two minutes out there with these youngsters. With art, uh, age is not a fact. As long as I have the ability to like hold this pencil and hold it reasonably steady, <laughs> I can still I can still do what I what I need to do, and it's really hard for me. I usually put my I, I started like putting the dates, the year, and that's kind of like to keep track of like where I was at at that particular time. And it's like I can look I can look back at some stuff I did years ago. I can't honestly say that. Well, I can look back at some stuff and say, oh wow, that's pretty good. I you know like I said I did a pretty good job way back then. And I may see something I did like now that maybe I feel it wasn't as good as something I did 20 years ago. That's not to say that I'm getting worse or better. It's just, it's just, it's just different. You know, it's different in the sense that when I do a picture, it depends upon my frame of mind. Like sometimes I'll go all the way as far as I can take it. I'll just keep going until I can't do nothing else to it. And then sometimes I, my attitude is just the exact opposite. Sometimes I'll try to see if I can accomplish the same satisfaction with a lesser amount of work. And I just do that. And if it doesn't work, then uh, like a good example is this picture well, it's around the corner. But initially, it's this black and white picture, which you'll see later. I was trying to do like what they call a line drawing. I'm just going to just do like just, just a line, you know. And I wasn't going to put nothing else. But when I finished it, I looked at it and I said, nah, something's missing. And it's just a feel. It's like when I look at it, you know, I'm looking at the picture and I, either I'm saying, yeah, okay, that's coming along, that's coming along nice, like, yeah, I'm going right. Then sometimes I'll say, wow, something's, something's missing, something's not right. I don't know if it's the same, it's like when you're getting ready to go out to wherever the club or whatever, and you look in the mirror and you say, wow, something ain't right. This shirt ain't going with these pants or whatever. And that's the way I am. Like, I can put something on and I can immediately tell whether or not I'm feeling it. You may not be feeling it. But, I, you know, I say, oh, yeah, that's cool. I can work. Then I can put on something. And somebody else will say, oh, no, nah, man, that's tight. I say, nah, nah, something. That's the way it is with my art. And that's, that's kind of cool, too, because once, once I reach that point where I say I'm done, and you know, I sign it, and I, you know, I frame it or whatever. Very rarely would I go back and say, "Oh wow, man, I missed that." Because again, it's just a feel. So you know, again, the rewards, uh, one of the rewards of, of being an artist, especially at my age, is that I still like I have a purpose. You know, I'm, I'm still like a productive citizen. You know, uh, of the United States of America. And uh, it, it's opened up doors that I didn't even know, either I didn't know the door even existed or the door was initially closed. Like me being here. I mean, if someone had told me a couple of months 
before I moved in here that I was going to be living here, I'd have told them that they was crazy. I was like, get out of here. How's that going to happen? And then when I started hearing rumors about me, you know, going to be in here, like the CMA, blah, blah, blah. You know, it didn't logically compute. Because I'm thinking, well, why would that happen? Because they didn't really know me. They just, all they knew about me was that I was a quote unquote artist and that I was uh, searching for my son who I hadn't seen in years, you know. And as a result, you know, these doors open up that, you know, I not only like, I'm in this loft that used to be the Sears, and then me and my son reconnected like within a couple of months after I moved in here, and we, we have a great relationship. In fact, I talked to him just, uh, just last night, you know. So we went this period of 17 years of being totally out of touch, but it was through my art that, you know, I'm in Deep Ellum, I'm you know, doing a sidewalk artist thing. I got artwork propped up against this wall, and I'm out there drawing. And I'm approached by, you know, uh, MTV, and you know, they had this TV show, and they're looking for contestants for this show. And they're literally traveling all over the United States, and they, you know, they stopped in Dallas. And they just happened to be in Deep Ellum on Elm Street and, and Good Latterman, which is where I was at. Because, I mean, Dallas is a pretty good sized city. They could have been in, they could have stopped anywhere. But they stopped there, and I just happened to be there that day, which I wouldn't have been there if I hadn't have been an artist, you know. And so they, you know, they actually bought, you know, one of the guys, he actually bought, bought uh, I was selling framed up prints. He actually bought a print. And they're telling me, uh, the only thing they said to me was, after they tell me what the show is about and what I want to do before I die, and when I say to them, well, I would like to reconnect with my son who I haven't seen since he was two. So now he's 19. I didn't know anything about the technology and so far as computers and Googles and Facebook and MySpace, I didn't know that stuff even existed. And when they left, I had signed a waiver allowing them to use any footage because they're filming all this here. They chose to use some of this footage. I'm giving them permission to use this footage. And when they left, I'm not thinking I'm ever gonna see them again. They're like out of sight, out of mind. And then I got a phone call from them like a few days later, I said maybe four or five days later, and he said, yeah, remember me, man? You know, we met you in Dallas. By this time, they were in Tennessee, I believe. And they were telling me that they were really intrigued with my story. And they would like to help me find my son. And I'm thinking like, yeah, right. You know, how you gonna find him? You know, it's a big, United States is a big place. How you, because I don't know anything about the advancements in technology about like Google, for example. Because I Google all the time now. Some jump, I do a Google, right? And within, you know, a matter of, within a, a month of me initially meeting them, I'm in here living. It just happened so quick, it was like a, like a made up story on TV, like a fairy tale. And it was all because of my art, you know. And then once I got in here, oh man, you know, I've been in art contests. I have won first place, second place in a National Frito-Lay Black History Month art contest two years in a row, you know, which wouldn't have happened because it wouldn't have happened prior to me being here because someone told me about it, right? Someone who works here told me about it. So I was available for this information. So that's what I'm saying about the art. The art has, has made me available for certain information that I wouldn't have received, you know, had not been like practicing my art, you know, cause I was like an undercover artist for, for years, you know. And I remember my dad, before he passed, like when I would bring home my report card, I'd be saying, yeah, daddy, you know, I got an A&R. He would say, yeah, well, I already know that. What you get in English and arithmetic, you know, because, you know, he took my art for granted the same way I did to me. You know, being able to draw was like no big deal. It was just something I could do. Some, it's like people sing. You have, you have people who can sing you don't know they exist, right? They got people out there that can, can blow like Shaka Khan, but we don't know them. We don't even know they exist, you know? And I was kind of like, you know, like this, this guy who could, who could draw. I really think, you know, even now, I don't think that I'm all that as an artist. What I do say about my art is that what I do is, as far as I know, as far as I, you know, as I'm concerned, is that 
is, is unique from a standpoint that I do work primarily in pencil, and I, I just don't do pencil sketches. You know, I can do, I've done full-blown art scenes, like real big, right? And people look at it and say, wow, that's in pencil, because they're thinking like, you wouldn't think that a pencil could cover that much, you know, and, and, and it's detailed when it, when, I need to be, when it needs to be detailed, you know. And so I think that uh, because what I do, it like comes out of, my, out of my head. So I'm not the type of person that I very rarely, if ever, do anything that already exists. Like, which I used to do in the beginning, like, you know, in other words, I already have an existing picture, and then I'm just basically drawing with it, you know, I'm doing like this here. You know, I very rarely do that. Like, I'll just get like this idea, like I had an idea, and I formulate a picture in my brain as to how I want to, you know, put it, and then I just go from there. And that's just something that, that developed over the years. I couldn't always do that. So it's like a, a special gift. Because some, one time someone came and they were looking at something, they said, what is, what, where's, what is your reference point? I didn't know what he was talking about. I said, what is that? What do you mean, reference point? He said, well, you know, what, what are you drawing that from? I said, I said I'm drawing it out of here. And it's like, oh, why you did that out of your head? Well, that's just how I do it, you know. I couldn't always do that, but that's the way I do now. So that's why I don't like doing portraits. I can do a portrait. I've done many portraits, but I don't like doing them because I'm locked into it's like I feel like I got handcuffs on because when you do a portrait, then it has to look exactly like that person. And, you know, no matter how good the artwork may be, if it don't look like the person, then it's, 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 not, going, it's not going to wash, you know, because they'll say, well, it doesn't look like me. But the irony of that is I have done some portraits of people, and I'll make this brief. One was of a female that I worked with. This is when I was working in the dental lab. And she, uh, she gave me a picture of her, which was like a side view, and she wanted, it was like a Polaroid. And, you know, she wanted me to do it, so I did it. She was actually a very attractive chick, you know, blonde, blue eyes, you know, nice body. When I did it, when she looked at it, first thing she said was, oh, wow, is, is my nose that long? She had, like, you know, a long nose, not like uh, Barbara Streisand. I never even noticed it. But from the side, you know, it was kind of, you know, but it didn't take nothing away from her looks. So I said, well, I'm just drawing, you know, what the picture is, is, is indicating. So she's admitting that, that what I did looks exactly like the Polaroid. But then she says, well, could you just take a little bit off my nose? And her name was Jamie. I said, Jamie, I could, but I'm not going to do that. Like, then it's not going to be your nose. She was, well, no, you ain't got to take that much off. I said, I'll tell you what, like, you know, we ain't going to trip over this here. Like, you know, you don't owe me nothing. You know, we still friends. And she ended up buying it, but it tripped me out because she was, you know, I didn't think she was conceited, but she probably was, apparently, because she's worried about her nose, which that's her nose. That's the nose that she's been walking around with for, for quite a while, right? Because she was probably in her 20s then. The other story was of a guy, and he was like the stereotype, quote unquote, pimp, you know. He got girls out there, out there in the street hustling, making money for him. We met by accident, you know, and in some kind of way, he found out I could draw, I don't remember that. But anyway, I ended up doing, he gives me this picture, this is a picture of him, he's got money in his hand, he got the bling, just a typical the stereotype pimp. Hat, cock, ace, deuce, you know, like this here, the money, right? So I did the picture, but it didn't look like him. I wasn't able to capture the light, and that happens sometimes, you know, it's just like for some reason you can't, you just miss it, you just miss the mark. So I remember I went to him, went over his crib, I told him, I said, because I had told him I'd probably have it done by whatever day. So I said, look, man, I said, I'm going to need a little bit more time, I said, because I'm going to have to do it over, I said. Uh, I'm at the door. He said, "Why?" He said, "What happened?" I said, "It don't look like you." He said, "He said, where is it at?" I said, "What's out in the trunk of your car?" Out the trunk of my car. He said, "Go get it, right?" So I go get the picture, show it to him. He loved it. He was like, "Ah, oh, man, you know, he like want to give me five. And then one of his girls, <laughs> she said, "Ooh, daddy, he's right. It don't look like you." And he said, "I'll be shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. In fact, get on over there." He just and he bought it. 
So I'm saying, all right, one chick, one person, they look just like her, but she's tripping about her nose. This dude, it don't look like him, right? But he loved it because he's just like, you know, I had to, you know, I had the, the ring and the watch, you know. And I'm thinking the whole portrait thing is crazy. And, you know, the whole story behind portraits is there was a time when there was no camera. So that's the only, like, let's say George Washington. There are no photographs of George Washington because there weren't no cameras yet. So everybody, the, you know, the portrait artist, that's, you know, he was the, that, he was the only thing to capture, you know, the likeness of whatever, you know, till cameras came up. But now with cameras, but now with technology being like it is, I'm surprised that people even want a portrait painted. You know, I just, because you can, you know, with technology, you know, now they're doing selfies, right? They, all, they caught up on the selfies. I don't even know why a person would, but even to this day, I still get people, they'll ask me, uh, do you do portraits? And I just tell them, I'll tell them that physically I'm capable of doing portraits, but uh, I don't do them because I don't like doing them. And so I, it's, it's like work for me to do a portrait. And to me, the whole art thing is fun, you know, and like even now, I, I do very little consignment work but when I do consignment work, I, I get a clear understanding that I have to have a certain amount of creative uh, control over what I'm doing. Because if you try to lock me into an area where, okay, I want this done, but I, this has got to be exactly like this here, and this has got to be this way. See, what's happening is that I'm not feeling what he's saying, right? What he or she is saying. So because I'm not feeling it, it's like, it's hard for me to, to, to do it. You know, physically, I mean, I, maybe if you put a gun to my head and tell me you're going to blow my brains out if I don't do it, I don't know. Because I can be so sorry to say, say, man, you just have to pull the trigger because I'm not going to do this, you know. But if you, you know, if you give me control, like, for example, when I did the stuff for the Omni, the hotel, you know, they commissioned me to do five works, you know. I actually ended up doing seven, but they just said, okay, we know your style, we know you work in pencil. Uh... They just wanted me to do neighborhood scenes, you know, and they left it up to me who I chose, you know, like I chose Opening Bell, you know, the coffee house. I chose Bill's Records around the corner across the street. I did Brooklyn's, the jazz club used to be up the street. I did uh, Off the Bone, you know, and it was like I could do it whichever way I wanted to do it, right? So I was cool with that, you know, and the only thing they were specific about was the size. They wanted it real big, like this size, which is like 43 by 36. So that was the beginning of me like working real large. And in the beginning, I thought that, I didn't know how well pencil would, would, would work in doing stuff real big, but I discovered that it w was no different. It just, you know, it took a little longer, but ironically, it's not always about the size. I've done stuff that was little, that took me longer to do than something like this size. So it's not always about the size. And some kind of way I got through it because, you know, when I found out about the project, it was like in August, and the hotel is opening in November, so that's what, September, October, no, like three months away. I'm not very fast. I'm not quick at all, you know. I'm not quick, so, you know, I like to take my time, and then I, when I reach a point where I'm not feeling it, then I just shut it down for that day, you know. So, you know, I was on a timetable, you know. And then uh, the very first piece I did, it didn't even, it wasn't accepted. In fact, it was a bills. And I didn't find out that it wasn't accepted because now I was working on, oh, I had, all right, then I did the second one. So now I'm getting ready to work on the third one. When I'm beginning the third one, now I find out that the first one wasn't accepted. So that threw me back even further. So I was literally out here just nonstop, you know. I didn't like that part of it, you know, in terms of just, I mean, when I say nonstop, I'd be working then, you know, until wee wee hours, and I would just literally lay down in the same clothes, right? And then get up the next day, right, and be right back at it. I ain't showered. I might have brushed my teeth, I don't know. They ain't cold my hair, I'm just back out here, like, you know. And this went on like during that whole period, you know, because it was a major pro project. So I wanted to do the very best job possible, you know, because the stuff was going to be hanging up in a, in a hotel being seen by whoever, you know. Like, it's almost like a fantasy, like Oprah come through town and have a, a, some sort of, you know, function in that room, right? 
and you know, or someone like an Oprah. Because now I do believe in, uh, I believe in karma, and I believe in things that can happen to you that you had no clue that this was going to happen. No, it just it just came out of what appeared to be nowhere, and uh, all of a sudden, you know. You know, voila, you know, something is going on, you know. Uh, you know, in other words, like someone, I remember the Cosby show, he, in the Cosby show, he had a lot of art on his wall, you know, quote unquote black art. I don't consider myself, I don't consider what I do as black art, it's just, I'm black, so this is what comes out of me. But I used to always think in terms of the art that he had on the wall. But the, the best case scenario is, uh, Ernie Barnes, who did the picture of For Good Times. And the, I was very influenced by Ernie Barnes and his style, because I had never seen anything like that. You know, what I learned from Ernie Barnes was that you could exaggerate, you know, like everything doesn't have to be in proportion as how we think in terms of human beings, you know. Like I can do whatever, because I have the pencils, I can do whatever I want to do. So this isn't like, Super exaggerated, but sometimes I really exaggerate. People always tell me, like, I exaggerate women's behinds. Well, there are a lot of women out there that got, they got these jungle booties, right? So I, I, I do that, you know. But uh, Ernie Barnes was an ex-professional football player that I didn't know anything about him as a football player. And when he did that picture for Good Times, even to this day, people, they'll see my work and they'll say, they'll say, good times. Or they'll say, JJ, because JJ, JJ's character in, in good times was that he was an artist. And so the work that you would see, it would be Ernie Barnes. Well, they, a lot of them don't even know who Ernie Barnes is. But as a result of Ernie Barnes getting that, 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 that kind of spotlight, you know, for that show, then, you know, I read somewhere where a lot of famous actors and actresses bought his art just because of that. So that's always kind of been a fantasy to, I mean, I would love that to have that type of situation where my art could be on, you know, a show like that that people would recognize because anybody who was around in the 70s, who, you know, even some of the younger kids, they're just seeing it like in reruns they know that artwork, because it's, it's, it's funny, uh, with all you hear is like, like, good times, you know, and you see that picture, right? And that picture was uh, actually on the cover of a Marvin Gaye album. The name of the picture was called Sugar Shack, so it was on, I can't think of the name of that album, but it was on the cover of that album. I don't know which one came first, you know. I want to say that the show showed it first, but just that one piece you know, it propelled Ernie Barnes to like, you know, unbelievable heights in terms. I don't know how well he was doing prior to that, but I know after that, it was like, you know, he like had him. He's actually, he actually died, uh, it was like last year, it might've been year before last, you know. So that's kind of like a fantasy. It's, you know, if it happens, it happens, if not, you know. But, you know, that's, that's again, you know, doing what I do at my age, Age is not a factor at all, and, and, I lo and I love that part because, you know, most of the time, age is a factor, you know, like, I mean, if, on certain jobs, they'll make you retire. They say, man, it's time for you, it's time for you to retire. They're going to give you a nice, you know, package, you know, with, uh, what is that they give you after you've been working on a job so long? Uh, well, not severance. Seven is like if they fire you, isn't it like when they fire Pension, I was thinking like a pension, you know, you get a nice pension package, you know. But they're basically telling you, you're too old, right? You know, you can't do this anymore, you know. And uh, I remember a time, I, I used to give blood, right? I used to donate blood. I remember I went to a blood bank one day, they looked at me and said, oh, you're too old to give blood. It was like, there was, I didn't even know that, but the cutoff age was like 47, 48, you know. So there's a lot of things that once you get too old, you can't do this anymore, you know. But, you know, me being an artist, it, again, as long as I have the, the strength, you know, and the ability to just still create, you know, age is not a factor. So, I don't, like I said, I have artwork, 
man, literally all over the world. I, I remember one time, even a person from India, the, it was a man and a woman, so they speak Hindu, I believe. And so he, the guy, he, he didn't speak any English, so the woman, she's interpreting, right? And I know the people from India, they're very, uh, there's no disrespect, I'm just saying, they kind of like say within their own culture, they, they don't, you know, they, you know, they marry within their culture, you know, and they, you know, they're just, and that, nothing wrong with that, so they bought two, because she's, you know, I'm telling her, I was selling, you know, framed up press, and I'm telling her how much cost. she said, and then he said something, she said, well, he wants to know what if he bought two, and I was blown away by that, that they were, would be interested in my art, you know, Asians, you know, Spanish, you know, white, European, whatever, you know, college, young college, high school, whites have bought my art, you know, and there have been times where I've actually uh, said to a person, there was a lady and I was in DC, this woman was a priest in the Episcopal Church, well, you know, the collar and everything, and I was on the, I was on the streets and I was, she, her, she was married, her and her husband, they bought two you know, jazz pieces. You know, I do a lot of jazz pieces. But I was working on this piece. It was like a club scene, like imagine the Cliff Club. If, you, if anybody from Dallas, I don't even know if the Cliff Club is still open, but it used to be in Oak Cliff, very famous club from you know, back in the day. And, you know, it's funky, you know, I mean, it's, it's raw. You know, they dance, you know, they, they shaking whatever they got to shake, you know, and, you know, and that's the way this scene was. It was a funky scene, and I'm working. I'm probably like three, three fourths of the way through, and she says, she says, I like that. She says, she says when you get through with it, she says, I like to buy that. So I asked, I said, what do you mean? Well, you want a printer? She said, no, I like to get the original. So at first it didn't even dawn on me until I got back home, and I got to think about it. And I'm saying, and I'm looking at her. She was this middle-aged white lady. Real square, right? Just don't look like she ain't ever did anything on the wrong side. You, know, you never know. You can't judge a book by its cover. But I'm saying she's a priest in the church. The church is right around the corner from where I was set up at. I'm like, what is she gonna do with this picture? Where's she gonna hang it, right? So when I I finished it, like you know, within a week of my initial meeting with her, I called her to tell her, you know, I was done with. She said, Yeah, come on down. And she just, you know. She just loved it. So she's in the process of writing me out a check. And I remember I said to her, I said, I said, I want to ask you something. I said, I don't take this the wrong way. I said, but all right, I'm looking at you. And then I'm looking at this picture that you buy. <laughs> and this picture that you buy is it's raw. It's it's funky. And I'm looking at you. I don't see you in this picture. So I, I'm just curious, what is it about this picture that you like? And she said to me, she did so much talk about the subject. She just said, oh, I just love the passion and the colors. Which, you know, I hear that a lot, but this particular scene, to this day, I'm saying, I mean, <laughs> and there were some other people that were there in the church. You know, it was like in the daytime, you know. There were other people there, and I remember her saying, you know, to one, she said, oh, yeah, just the guy I was telling you about, you know, this person. And when they, you know, when they looked, they didn't like frown, but I could like see it in the expression. Like they were probably saying like, oh, man, what's, what's, you know. But she was just like, she didn't have a problem with it. So I don't have a problem with that because she's buying it, you know, and I got the check in my hand. But that, that just blew me away. So I'm always, even to this day, I'm always amazed that some of the things that a person will buy, you know, it's kind of like a habit. Uh, I don't know, like say if a guy say real tall, like say he used to play basketball, I said, yeah, man, I got, I got a basketball flick in there. They'd be like, nah, nah, nah. They'll pick something out that, that's just totally not even like what I'm thinking would be in their personality, you know, uh, and that happens a lot. What really is weird is that like I have stuff that's on the wall, on the table, but sometimes I may have something that's just kind of laying to the side over in a corner somewhere. And the person, they'll come and they'll be looking around and they'll be saying, yeah. Then they'll spot something over in a corner somewhere, got dust on it. And they'll say, well, what's that over there? And I'll say, oh, that's nothing. They'll say, no, no, can, let me see that. And then they'll say, oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, I like this. You know, and I actually almost 
I don't want to say I get mad, but I almost get like a, a, a minor attitude. They don't see it. But in my mind, I'm saying, I got all this other stuff that I done labored over that I'm proud of. And they'll be looking at something like, because if it's over in a corner, it probably means that, I mean, because I don't just love everything I do. It's like, once I do it, and when I'm finished with it, I look and I say, yeah, I like that. That's, that's just where, you know, that's just what I was hoping. To. And sometimes I'll just miss the mark, like I said, mm, I don't know, something, you know, I'm not feeling it, you know, so I'll, I'll just have it, you know, I don't tear it up. I don't think I've ever just torn anything up, you know. And then some things will it, it even exceed my expectation. It'll be like, damn, wow, I laid that out. You know, I'd like pat myself on the back, you know. But I don't be tripping, you know. And so that's always been amazing to me that people, what I learned is, I'll put it this way, I, there was a time when I, I, I used to like do things that I thought a person would like, right? I'd do this shit, yeah, yeah, they'll like this here, right? And I, then I, I discovered that you don't know what a person likes. You don't know. That's why it's hard to, that's why it's hard to uh, buy a gift for a person. Like my brother, for example, and he does me. I know exactly what he likes. I know what his taste is in music and clothes and vice versa, you know, so I could buy some clothing for him that, because I know, I know what, it, what he likes, you know. But when it comes to art, a person will like, I don't do very many, many uh, drug-related pictures, even though drugs, there was a time when drugs was a part of my life. But I, I had a picture I had did, it was of, uh, it was a chick smoking some weed. And the lady who bought it, you know, she was a lawyer. <laughs> she was non-black, which is not really relevant. But I had this other picture I had done. She'd already bought something off me. So I had did another picture similar to the one she had bought. And I'm thinking, like, this would go good with the one she already bought. So I, I, I texted her or called her and said, yeah, you know, next time you get a moment, stop by. I said, I got something here I just done. I said, I think you may like it. And when she came by, I could tell immediately that she wasn't feeling it. Like, and I was surprised because it was so similar. She said, yeah, you know. And then I had this other picture over there and I had this chick, she was like, like this here. She said, oh, wow. She says, what are you asking for that? <laughs> I told her. So she gave me like half of it right then, right? Just a deposit, you know, she said, well, I'm gonna give you you know, and I was telling her that, well, you, you can take it now, because, you know, we knew each other, you know, you can just give me the rest. She said, no, no, no. And then I just asked her, I said, no, I didn't ask her, but it came up in conversation a little bit later because she says to me, well, her, her boyfriend, who I had met, he was from Denver. And so Colorado, you know, everybody, they recently legalized weed, right? So it's like a thriving business out there. You can buy all the weed you want, you know. And so I said, uh, all right, he smokes weed, so she probably smokes weed. So, but then she told me that she didn't smoke. She bought it. Uh, no, I take it back. No, I got it, I got it wrong. She told me she didn't smoke weed. I said, oh, you bought it for him. She said, no, nah, I bought it for myself. So now she done threw me off. Like, all right, you don't smoke, but you buy. And she just, again, she just liked the, the artwork. She, you know, she's, I think she used the same words, passionate. So again, you know, it's kind of like, so that's why I just do what I want to do, you know. I do it, and then once I'm done, you know, either someone's going to like it and buy it or they're not. But anything I don't sell, it's no big deal because I don't do it for the money per se. I mean, everything is about money because you can't live without money, but I do it because I'm, I, I have a sincere passion for what I do, you know, and it, it just, it, you know, I get a real good feeling to be able to say uh, that I am an artist. You know, I'm not just somebody who draws, you know, before I was just someone who draws. I mean, I'm an artist. If anybody who knows me now, especially, you know, since I've been living here, they know me as an artist. They don't really know that much about my, my previous life, which was a, is a totally different, different thing, you know. So I just get a lot of, you know, like even my son, when me and him reconnected, I feel good to be able to present myself to him 
not only as his father, who he hadn't seen in all these years, but for him to be able to say, yeah, you know, yeah, my dad's an artist, you know. And, you know, my ex-wife, that was funny, my ex-wife, she, I thought that she didn't even know that I had any artistic ability, because I don't remember doing anything. But apparently I had did a picture of Jimi Hendrix that I had forgot I had done, and this is even before me and him had reconnected. At some point, my ex-wife gave it to my son. And he's telling me, I'm telling him one day, I said, yeah, your mama don't even, if she saw me now, she'd probably say, well, you should have been doing this when we was married, you know. Maybe we'd still be married. And then he said, no, nah, she know. I said, no, nah, I don't think she know. Then he, that's when he told me the story about the picture. So I said, he took a picture of the picture and sent it to me on my phone. As soon as I saw it, I remembered. I said, oh, yeah, I remember that. But I didn't remember doing it when I was married, you know. But anyway, you know, I, I, I felt good for him, for me to be able to present myself to him, you know, as an artist, you know. So, you know, I, you know kids, I don't know how important it is for kids to be able to say something about their parents, but I know it's like probably better, a better feeling to say, oh yeah, well my dad, he's a, you know, he's a, a, he's a council member, you know, city council, he's a this, you know, as opposed to, Oh, my dad, he's just, you know, an old drunk. You probably see him standing in front of the beer and wine store. Because I knew a chick like that. And when I met her, I'm over her house, and her dad comes in while I'm over there. And so I said, oh, wow, I know that dude. He was like a wino. He was like the D wino who hung out in front of the liquor store trying to bum nickels and dimes, right? And I saw him for years as a kid growing up, so now I'm kicking it with his daughter. And I mean, it was what it was, you know. So I don't know if she was embarrassed by that, you know. I, I, I even brought it up, you know, I said, yeah, you know, I used to see your dad all the time. So she's not in denial about him being what he is, you know. But I feel good to be able to, shut up, that's my catch. <laughs> I feel good to be able to present myself as, you know, as an artist, you know, so.